Hello and welcome to my case presentation of a patient with sudden onset of deterioration, which fits into the topic toxic and metabolic diseases. My name is Marco Essig. I'm a professor and chair at the Department of Radiology at the University of Manitoba in Canada. The case I would like to talk about today is a 51 year old patient. He presented with acute and persistent decreased level of consciousness and was admitted to the emergency department. The patient had a recent history of assault and a CT workup was done. At admission, he presented with high blood pressure. Uh, the laboratory exam was normal. Patient had a history of drug abuse. Workup was done with a cranial CT study. This is the CT study done two weeks before the current admission after being assaulted. As you can see, we have here a normal CT study of the brain. Things changed since he was admitted. So there's a bilateral hypodense change now in the putamen with a acute left-sided hemorrhage, as you can see here. Both basal ganglia, putamen predominantly are affected and there are areas of acute hemorrhage. After further deterioration after admission, an MRI was done on that patient. And as you can see, there are changes both in the cerebellum subcortical white matter, again, in both basal ganglia with an acute hemorrhage on the left, as well as subcortical white matter changes with diffusion restriction. Uh, the changes are hyper intense on flare and there's a large susceptibility artifact coming from the acute hemorrhage. The changes are spread all over the brain, both supra and infratentorial, and the changes are predominantly in the subcortical white matter. So looking into the differential diagnosis of that case, we need to think about the acute onset. We have a CT study just two weeks ago, which was completely normal. Think about the affected structures. So we have basal ganglia, predominantly putamen involvement, and we have subcortical white matter changes, like encephalopathy changes. And think about the hemorrhage. In this case, we have a unilateral large area of hemorrhage in the basal ganglia on the left. So in our differential diagnosis and matching the topic, we have to think about intoxications. We have to think about carbon monoxide encephalopathy, methanol induced encephalopathy, or heroin induced encephalopathy. But we should not forget about metabolic disorders like Lee's syndrome or Wilson's disease. In this case, we have an acute toxic glycencephalopathy due to methanol poisoning, which is in this case complicated by acute hemorrhage. For methanol poisoning, hemorrhage is typical, and it's typical in the putamen and most commonly bilateral. In our case, we see only a unilateral area of hemorrhage. The optic nerves and the retina can also be involved and can be assessed by clinical examination. Methanol poisoning is a very common cause of intentional or non-intentional intoxication. The central nervous symptoms in the acute phase are common and include impaired level of consciousness, inclusive of vomiting, nausea, dizziness, headache, and visual disturbances. The intoxication itself causes a permanent brain damage that is caused by the methanol metabolites, mainly formic acid, and the formic acid causes a serious metabolic acidosis after a period of 12 to 24 hours, resulting in a leukencephalopathy. Neuroimaging helps in distinguishing methanol poisoning from other causes of acute unconsciousness, like alcoholic intoxication, hypoglycemic brain damage, carbon monoxide poisoning, or head injury. 
The methanol poisoning characteristically, like in our case, tends to be bilaterally affected the putamen, the optic nerves and the retina, um, and involves the basal ganglia, the subcortical white matter, including the cerebellum. A bilateral hemorrhage in the putamen is typical and differentiated from other intoxications. In our case, we have a hemorrhage, but it's unilateral. The basal ganglia involvement is likely because of the direct effect of the met methanol metabolites and the selective vulnerability of the basal ganglia to acidosis as compared to the rest of the brain. At the end, I would like to show you two other cases of intoxication. This is a case of carbon monoxide intoxication. Like in our case with methanol intoxication, we have a subcortical Leuk encephalopathy, which is more pronounced in this case, but the putamen and the basal ganglia are spared. However, we do see white matter changes in the corticospinal tracts. This is uh, the flare, matching flare. You see these signal abnormalities in the internal capsule, as well as the subcortical global Leuk encephalopathy. This is another case, a case of heroin-induced encephalopathy, where we see these classical changes, butterfly kind of in the posterior fossa in the cerebellum, as well as changes along the corticospinal tract. Thank you for your attention and stay tuned. Thank you very much.